1989, the University of the West Indies in Jamaica, which was the university I attended, had a job fair and I signed up to do the public relations officer interview, a public relations officer interview. Because at that time, I was sure that I wanted to be a public relations officer because I said I had the gift of gab and obviously that would be the perfect fit. That's what I thought. So the day of the interview arrived and when I went to the interview, as I sat down, the first thing the interviewer said to me was, are you prepared to relocate to live in the country? And I said, relocate? He said, yes, this means you'd have to live in the country two hours away. I said, um, whoa. And he said, did you read the job advertisement? I said, clearly I didn't read it properly. He said, yes, we're looking for someone who's willing to relocate. He said, okay, so you didn't know, but now you know. Are you now prepared to do that? I said, no. And I had to say no because my then boyfriend, no husband, would have been left alone and clearly I was 21 and I wasn't going to leave him. So he thanked me for my honesty and we said goodbye and that interview probably lasted three minutes. As I was walking away from the interview, I kept thinking, how could I have missed that? But you know what, I was 21 and I thought I knew everything. So not only did I not realize that it meant relocating, but I also did not apply to anything else. So I had no other job prospects. I didn't know what I was going to do. As I was walking away from that tent, I heard, Miss Leach, Miss Leach. Now, Leach was my maiden name and that voice, I knew that voice. I turned around, Miss Leach and I saw my grade seven English teacher. Now, this was when I was 21 and she was my grade seven English teacher when I was in grade seven, so I would have been about 11. I hadn't seen her for at least 10, well, I guess I would have seen her while I was still at school, but I graduated from high school maybe five years before, and I'm telling you, when I heard her voice, I knew it was her before I looked around because she was that kind of teacher. She loved English language. She was um, trained, she was British trained, and everybody who went, who, who, who had her as a teacher, fell in love with English language, including myself. So when I heard her voice, I was happy to say, Miss Morrison, how are you? Chit chat, chit chat, chit chat. And when we finished, she said, I'm so glad I saw you because we're looking for teachers to teach at St. Hughes. St. Hughes was the name of the high school and she was now the vice principal. She said, can you commit to teaching English language for two years? I said, Miss Morrison, I, um, I guess I could commit to one year. I mean, I didn't have a job, right? So I said to her, I can commit to one year, but I'm not sure about two years. And she said, okay, we'll take that. Can I tell you that that was 30 years ago and I've been teaching ever since. The first five years I taught high school and the last 25 years I've been teaching college and university. Of course, I've changed courses along the way where I started out teaching history and English, then I went to university English writing courses, and then I went to um, ESL, and then now I'm teaching mainly communication courses. But it has been quite a journey. But one of the things I know, this I know, is that I love teaching. I've had different challenges along the way, but I love teaching. I love education. I love learning. I love books. I like anything that has to do with learning. And for me, learning is something that I think each person should really engage in. 
So my journey has been from not knowing what I wanted to, to do or thinking I wanted to be a public relations officer to stumbling into teaching to finding my calling. And one of the things I learned over the, uh, along this journey was that there were no accidents. There are no accidents. Even though I accidentally ran into my teacher, it turned out to be what I should have been doing because this is definitely my passion and my calling. What about you? Have you ever found that you stumbled into something and you wondered, why am I doing this? But you know what, my challenge to you is to realize that when these things happen, there's a divine purpose, there's an order. And we don't really have to worry because life unfolds. And as it unfolds, we will find out where we're supposed to be. And if we're wondering about purpose, we will find that out too. But I, this I know, there are no accidents.